So here's how the slides were supposed to go in my TCIA presentation. This is me just showing an urban tree in uh, New York, Manhattan, and the uh, tight quarters. This is another one uh, just illustrating uh, tight quarters. Uh, there's a lot of soft targets too, wires in addition to fences and railings and other things that could be easily damaged. And then this next one shows where we're rigging to overcome terrain, uh, drifting things to the roof using that spar pole there to make it easier. We could have rigged it straight down, but it would have been terrible climbing stuff up that steep hill and then up those stairs, so we're using rigging to make life easier. This is another clip showing what we're rigging just for terrain reasons. It's not tight quarters, but we can't, we can let, I could maybe flop logs and make them land flat, but once I do that, there's no control. So that was for maximum control. This is illustrating, keeping in mind where your redirects are because there can be a lot of flex in the tree. And I wouldn't have done that if I was in an urban environment. We have plenty of uh, space to work with, but just notice the flex in the tree was the main point there. Here I'm lifting something and the rigging point is not directly above. So what's gonna happen is gonna lift to a point, but then the hinge is gonna break off to the side because the point is up and off to the side, but it was fine because we've already achieved what we wanted to achieve by lifting it away from the structure. But there's, you know, there's a lot to contend with when you are lifting things. It's not always clear cut and easy where you can just lift and it magically works out. You gotta calculate the distance and the angle and it's all in 3D. And now I have this little nice tagline for the guys to position the wood after they lower it. Now this next clip shows, uh, just keeping in mind, the swing of things and where your rigging points are. Here it was good to get it away from me, but it dings the other tree, and that's bad tree work, and that's all my fault right there. This next clip is illustrating things to watch out for when you are tip-tying, and here it, it wants to bring it right at you, uh, no matter if you let it run or not. Luckily I was able to be out of the way, I saw it coming. Great use of the butt line. Um, is a tight quarter situation even though it doesn't look like it because of power lines here but that line is keeping that butt sort of wrangling it in and keeping it from being in my face I knew it was going to pivot to a point and then break off and what the butt line is doing is keeping it from actually hitting me by controlling it and locking it off now this next bit shows uh, the use of a balance tie uh, it's I could have guessed where that was but it's a lot easier to have a balance tie and that way that piece doesn't dip one way or the other into that roof uh, here is a good calculate I you got to really be able to visually calculate distance and that was very tight calculation see it brushed the roof a little bit uh, here I am using my primary rigging point off to the right and a secondary at the butt with the use of redirects, I'm able to take a large piece like that into what seems pretty skinny of a wood to be a terminal rigging point. This is just illustrating angles a little bit and being able to recoup some of the, the distance lost when the piece flops over. This is an aerial friction device, the Morgan block, just showcasing it in action. Here we got a little natural crotch self-rigging, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend anybody do, but I was just sort of showing it to show it. Can be done, it's pretty old school. That's what they used to do back in the day a lot. Sean Finnegan, making logs land flat. It pertained to the, to the area it was in the presentation. And uh, yeah, look at that dab. He's good at what he does. <clears throat> Double block rigging is pretty cool and it's good for dissipating the force at the rigging point but unless you have somebody who can let it run like that it's kind of a moot point here we're getting into big log rigging is a double a dual double whip system to take a ridiculously stupid piece i'm kind of showing off you don't have to take a big piece like that when no other rigging options are available you're going to have to create a crash pad here i've done so with brush and tires and pallets to protect the I guess it was, I can't remember if it was slate or what it was underneath, but it wouldn't have been able to take a hit from a log. And sometimes that's what you gotta do because you just can't rig it and you run out of rigging room and you gotta do what you gotta do to get the job done. Anyways, thanks for watching. Sorry, everything, there was technical difficulties on the TCIA presentation. If you weren't there, you don't know about it. And if you're just seeing this, it's all out of context, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway.